In this of Mice and Men video, we're going to be looking at the poem To a Mouse by Robert Burns. Why are we doing this? Well, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck gets its name from the poem To a Mouse by Robert Burns. In the poem, one of the lines is, the best laid schemes of mice and men often go awry. Well, that's the, uh, the modern translation. The best, laid scheme, the best laid schemes of mice and men often go wrong. And we're learning about this poem. We're going to talk about this poem because some of the themes in To a Mouse and Of Mice and Men are actually very similar. Uh, so I feel like by looking at this poem, it'll actually help us predict the story. And finally, well, level three analysis, part of this is doing text to text analysis. So if we know about the poem To a Mouse by Robert Burns, we can actually make connections to it in our level three analysis. Now, before you read the poem, we need to know a bit of context. The poem, written by Robert, Robert Burns, uh, he is Scotland's national poet, or he was Scotland's national poet. He was born in 1759 and he died in 1796. He's a bit of a rebel. He's a bit of a ladies' man. He had quite a lot of illegitimate children at the time, which was quite risque and quite naughty. Um, so he was a bit of a bad boy at the time. He is the son of a farmer in the Scottish countryside. And this is actually quite important because he doesn't represent the establishment or the higher class. He comes from a working class family. Uh, and also being the son of a farmer actually has some relation to the poem and the content of the poem itself. Now, Robert Burns was a romantic, not the kind of lovey-dovey like Ryan Gosling type. He is a part of the British Romantic Movement, a literary movement uh, that featured art and literature. Uh, it's a cultural movement from around the mid-1700s to the mid-1800s. Now, British Romanticism can be classified as uh, literature or art that has a love on, of nature, a deeply entrenched love of nature. There's also a dislike of industrialization, industrialization and urban life. And it is anti-establishment. And that's actually really important. Again, as I said, Robert Burns was the son of a farmer. He's not from a higher social class. Um, he, and th this is actually shown in the poem to a mouse because he writes the poem in sort of traditional Scottish Gaelic with Scottish Gaelic words, which make it quite difficult to understand. So the establishment probably wouldn't have liked this. Uh, as well, some of you may have heard of William Wordsworth, who is thought to have sort of started the British Romantic movement. Um, but Robert Burns had, had written poetry years, over a decade and a half before uh, Wordsworth wrote his uh, collection of po poems. So that's important to know as well. Now, before you listen to the poem, because I'll have someone read the poem to you, before you listen to this, I might advise that you stop this video and go on the internet and search for a Scottish accent. You might want to watch an interview of Lewis Capaldi or hear excerpts from Sh Shrek. Um, but the poem is written in an older Scottish dialect and the speaker of the poem will speak it in a Scottish accent. So you might want to familiarise yourself with this. To a mouse, and turning her up in her nest with the plough, November 1785. We slick it, coorn timorous beastie, o'er a panics in thy breastie, thou needna start a wassy hasty wi' bickern brattle. I would be lathe to run and chase thee wi' murder and paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal. I doubt na whiles, but thou mon thieve. What then, poor beastie, thou mon leave? A demonicker in a thraves a small request. I'll get a blessing with a lave and never missed. Thy wee bit who say to and ruin, it silly was the winds are strewing, and Nathan now to big a new ain o' foggage green, and bleak December's winds ensuing, baith snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and wast, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell, till crash 
the cruel cooter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap o' leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now thou's turned out for a' thy trouble but house or hauled to thole the winter's sleety dribble and Cranroch called. But Mousie, thou art no thy lane and proven foresicht may be vain, the best laid schemes o' mice and men gang after glee and lea us nocht but grief and pain for promised joy. Still, thou art blessed compared with me, the present only touches thee, but ach, I backward cast my ee on prospects drear, and forwards, though I canna see, I guess and fear. All right, so now we've heard the poem, I'm just going to go through it again, a uh, little summary. So in the first stanza, the speaker, and this is important to know, we don't say narrator, we say the speaker when it comes to poetry. The speaker is a farmer, and he is talking to a little tiny mouse who he has just found, who he's, he's actually destroyed the home of this little mouse uh, on the farm. And he's saying, you know, don't be scared of me, I'm not going to chase you with my plow. The next stanza, he's apologising to the mouse. He's saying, you know, you and I have this connection. We're both part of nature, uh, and we are both connected in some way. I am supposed to be your earthborn companion, and therefore I should feel some sort of empathy and some sympathy towards you. Uh, I should treat you with respect. In the third stanza, he's saying, you know, I understand that you that you have to steal some time and often from my farm, but that's part of life. At the end of the day. You steal a little bit of corn, I've got a whole field of corn. I'm hashtag blessed to have so much that I wouldn't even notice if one piece was missing. Um, again, it's all part of this respect of one another and helping one another, not uh, being sort of selfish. Now, as the farmer has destroyed the mouse's house, uh, he comments on the fact that, you know, you, you've built this house and I've destroyed it and Christmas is coming, December is coming, winter is coming and um, because of that you know you're in a bit of a sticky situation there's no materials for you to make a new house with. Uh, in the autumn time you had thought you know winter is coming all of the plant life is uh, beginning to be, become bare, all the trees are falling off and that I better get to it and start making a cozy little house to take care of myself when winter comes. But I've destroyed it, and your flimsy house, which took you ages and ages to build, is now rubble on the floor, and winter is here. So he says, you know, we're similar in this. Um, you have the foresight in autumn to build this house, but the best laid schemes, the, the best plans and dreams of mice and men often go wrong. And what he's saying here is, you know, you had this plan to build a house in autumn, winter's here, and the plan has gone wrong. I've just destroyed it. I apologise. Similarly, men have plans that they plan with foresight that often go wrong, and they leave us only pain and grief. So if you make a plan to do something, let's say you've got a test tomorrow, so you study all night uh, looking at the sort of these this content for this test that you've got tomorrow, and then you do the test and none of the questions are about what you studied. But you're going to feel grief and pain for this sort of wasted time and, and promised joy. And in the last answer, he says, you know, but compared to me, you're blessed because um, you only focus on the present dangers you, you, you have in your life. But I, being human, think about the past and my regrets and the future and the unknown and I have fear for this. So we differ in that regard. Now, themes of the story. The first theme that I encounter is that in life um, we, we plan for things, but often these plans fail and there's broken dreams, much like the mouse who was planned to build a house. I know there's a lot of rhyme here. Uh, the mouse was planned to build a house um, which has been destroyed by a farmer. 
his bro his dreams are now broken because you know life and fate they just carry on and after the house is destroyed there's this continuation winter is still here and we still have to trudgingly go on with life even though our plans have been broken and we suffer because of this there's also mankind's relationship with nature. I think it's important that it's a farmer who encounters the mouse and destroys the, ho the house of the mouse on a farm and not in the wild. Um, there is a relationship there where one is living on the land of another, but the farmer is very empathetic towards the mouse. And I think in a way it's kind of uh, a message that we should be empathetic to all creatures in life and um, not treat them too harshly. We should. We should give them what we can and take care of our fellow man and fellow nature. So there is this thing where there's a relationship with mice and men, the bond between human and nature. And as well, I think the mouse was a good choice because they're small, innocent, like delicate little animals that, you know, bad things happen to them easily. Uh, but they're not too dissimilar. We can, as humans, we can kind of empathize with mice uh, if it was like a snake or a frog or something we'd probably be a bit more like Ugh. but a mouse we feel sorry for them because of their size and the last theme is the weak and the strong obviously we've got a farmer who's very strong compared to a mouse who's very weak uh, and the farmer unknowingly you know destroys the home of the weak um, they just have this sort of power over them um, but again, the farmer allows the, the weak to sort of take the corn with, without any repercussion. So there's a message there that if you are strong, you should help weaker people. But in life, there are definitely strong people and weak people. So these are the themes. Now, what, how are you going to use this four of mice and men? What predictions can you make? I've got three questions. What do you think some of the key thing, themes for of mice and men might be after reading this? And why? What kinds of conflict do you think the central characters and side characters might face? And the final question, John Steinbeck thought that the American dream was a lie. Um, he said that, you know, the problem with American working class was that they saw themselves as temporarily embarrassed millionaires, people who were just not millionaires yet, but they believed the dream so strong and they didn't and because of that, they were often exploited by this, uh, the upper classes. How might this belief that the American dream is a lie connect to the poem's themes? Why do you think that? So, John Steinbeck thought the American dream was a lie. How might the poem's themes connect to this? Those are the questions I want you to consider.